Let's begin. First one. Now, you might think, whoa, this is a long time ago. Okay, so this is all the way back in AM1, um, but that's one of the reasons why we review it, because when you get to a test, it's all that stuff which was done a long time ago that's easy to forget. So where did I get... Whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. Where did I get this pair of terms from? Where are they from? Yeah, good. So I've expanded this guy here, and I've said, well, the four goes to the x, then the four goes to the plus one. That's where those two things come from. Um, you tell me, what do you think would be the most common error when you do the expansion over here? What do you guys reckon? Yeah, it's going to be that double negative, right? Um, it's easy to just say, oh, minus this, minus that. But of course, you've got to have both of these guys interacting together. And when you multiply, two negatives gives you a positive. Okay. Uh, what did I do from the second line to the third line? What happened next? Yeah, I collected like terms, right? Um, we have this catch-all word of simplify, which is what's happened all the way down. But you guys know, we have specific language for this, and the more specific you can be, the better. So 8x minus 2, thumbs up. Yep. Let's have a look at this guy. Now, uh, solve the equation. What was the best way to go about this? We were trying to find out what u was. Okay, so you can see... Shh. You can see the approach I took. Now, I will point out, as we've seen in equations, right, there's lots of different ways to go about this. If you, if you landed here, I'm pretty confident in that. If you landed here, then that's okay, but maybe you took a harder path. So let me explain. What did I do from line one to line two? I multiplied through. Now, the reason why is because I just didn't want to deal with the fraction. It just looked gross to me, okay? So if I multiply this and this and this, everything, by three, then the fraction disappears. Okay? Okay, now, shh. Remember your 11. Let's try and get through this. And I do want you to discuss it just at the right time. Okay? So leave that to the end. You might look at that number and think, oh, it's a bit weird. Like 15 over 17? Really? But there's no reason to doubt. Like 15 over 17 is a weird number. But I could actually do something with this. What could I do to check to make sure I was actually right? Yeah, you've got the first line in here which apparently should work if I got the right value of u. Now, you could do that by hand, but of course you've got a calculator, which you can do this for you, right? So I guess what I'd put into this guy is uh, six times this 15 over 17 business, minus, uh, just be careful with your fractions here, 15 over 17 on three, right? And what are you expecting your calculator to hand you? You're hoping it's giving you five, and you can go ahead and confirm that, but I'm pretty confident in the way we've gone about the working. Question? You mean, you mean you got this answer, yeah, but you checked it and something went wrong? Yeah, I checked it and then it did, it wasn't five. So you do have to be careful. I have pointed out, you know, you use, um, you use a calculator to do something like this, but I'd expect perhaps somewhere in maybe that right-hand part, the fraction on the fraction, you can sometimes enter that wrong, so be careful. I'm happy to have a look at what you actually punched in. Let's move on. What do you think? Are you happy with um, 6.73? Times 10 to the things, yeah. We're getting pretty good at this. So you can see I've done it in two steps because there's a good chance a question like this would be two marks. And if you went straight here and you got it right, then good for you. But what if you made like, you rounded wrong, but you had the right 10 to the whatever. Um, if you've shown the working like I have up here, then at least you can work out, okay, I've got one of those two marks. And if you look at that thing, that something's gone wrong, at least you can go back to your working. Okay. All right, now, lastly, I had a look around, and um, I think some of us responded to this by saying, dunno, flip the table, and walk off, okay? So let's just, just think for a second. Admittedly, this question is maybe phrased in a way you haven't seen before, so let's just think it through, right? The mass of a can of soup, it gets measured, right? Now, I should say that this bit on the end is actually kind of, they're trying to give you a hand. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Because... You, you could actually have known that last bit, the nearest 10 grams business, you could have known that without me telling you. How could you have known? Have a look. It's 240 grams, right? So again, we think about significant figures, right? They don't have to tell you, oh, this is to two significant figures. If you've got a zero there, well, that could just as easily have been as the result of rounding, right? So that kind of implies, okay... This is supposed to be the nearest 10 grams, but they gave you a bit of a nudge. I gave you a bit of a nudge. So then when you think about error, right? This whole idea is if you think about, um, it's easiest to think about a ruler, I find. 
we use this with our original thing. Um, suppose it was, let's talk about centimeters or something like that. Right? So suppose here's 230, 240, 250. Right? So you remember this idea of saying, okay, if it's somewhere in between 240 and 250, but it's closer to 240, then that's why I'm going to round down to that. And the same on the opposite side. So this idea of absolute error, if you recall, it is half of, what was that phrase called? It started with an L. Does anyone remember? Yeah, this, this difference here, uh, which in this case was, well, 10 centimeters or 10 grams or whatever, that's the limit of reading. So you can see going either side is gonna be five grams this way, five grams that way, okay? So that's why the absolute error, let's just get rid of all this, um, the absolute error is five grams, okay? So you get the percentage error off that, obviously. So this is a bit tricky. If, if you couldn't do the first part, you couldn't access the second part, which is a bit of a pain. Um, if, for example, you actually answered something like, say, suppose you said 10 grams, Okay, at that point, which is, which is wrong. But if you went ahead and used that here, there's a good chance you would do that because what we're testing is, do you know how these two relate? And then can you convert to a percentage? And if you did that with the wrong number, then yeah. Which part did you cross out? Okay, sure. So uh, what is percentage error? I'm comparing the error with what I actually measured. Yeah, so that's why I get this fraction here. Your calculator will tell you 0 0.02, etc. And then I've just multiplied by 100. Is that okay? Do you want to ask? Yeah? yeah. Okay, sure. Just stretching. All right. Uh, let's move over to this, um, this guy over here. You've got the an equilateral triangle. And I was really pleased. You didn't have to do this, but I was really pleased to see a lot of you just, just drew something. Like, it's, it's cool to draw something because that will help you get a picture, like literally a picture of what's going on. If all of the sides are equal, then three by seven, 21. So that's all I was looking for. Now, I had a look around as you were going through um, for what answers you provided for part B. So a lot of you went straight there and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. However, let me give a bit of a caveat here. Um, that's okay in this case, because where does that 1.5 come from, by the way? Like it doesn't just come from nowhere. It, it comes from the fact that I've measured three times, right? Side, side, side. And every time I could be off by half a centimeter. So it's three lots of half a centimeter. That's what gives you that number, okay? I'm going to encourage you, if you wrote down only one and a half centimeters, when you get your paper back from your friend, can you put something down like this? I know this seems like, well, that's a bit excessive, isn't it? Like it's a lot simpler and faster just to work out three times one and a half. But that approach doesn't really work if you're doing area does it, right? You remember we were doing area and it's a lot more complicated than that. You've got to know the maximum, then the minimum, and then, that, then you make the comparison based on that, okay? So this is kind of a, um, this approach will always work, whereas this approach, it worked because I gave you a simpler question in this case. But if it's harder, you're going to need to remember, oh, this is actually how I'm doing it, okay? This is how I'm comparing uh, the errors on either side versus what I think the area or perimeter actually is. Does that make sense? So I'm going to encourage you to do that and I'll, I'll put that back on the screen in a minute.